and on which this conference takes place, we will be listening to a tradition that honors the Native American land upon which we are holding this conference. A land acknowledgement and then an overview of the three main Native American tribes that call this land home will follow. Rose Powhatan is a Native American representing the Pamunkey and Tauximant tribes. Rose is a historian, artist, and cultural activist. She grew up in a large extended family and holds both BFA and MA degrees from Howard University, as well as many scholastic honors from Catholic, Georgetown, and Trinity University. She's also a writer and promoter of outreach services that focus on the indigenous nations of the historic Powhatan, Paramountsi, and the Teano nations of the Caribbean. We are very lucky to have Rose with us this morning. Let us please welcome Rose Powhatan. Wingapo, which means welcome, cherished friends in the Algonquian language, the original language of Fairfax County. I'm here today to honor our ancestors and those of us who have survived uh, to continue our culture on this land. My ancestors called Atan Akamik, our fertile country, giving thanks to the creator for making everything in nature to help support our life. May the words of our mouths and the sincerity of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our creator. Amen, aho. Quite often, people speak of Native Americans of Fairfax County in the past tense, as in long ago or uh, historic uh, presentations will reinforce the misconception that we are not still here. But I must remind people that although the English stole our fruits, cut off our branches and cut the trees down, our roots are still here. And my people are a vibrant part of the fabric of this country, the Fairfax County, Virginia. The Powhatan Paramountsi, which stretched all the way from North Carolina up to Washington, D.C., was the dominant Native American organization that the English encountered when they came here and established Jamestown in 1607. The Spanish came earlier in the 1500s when they captured one of my ancestors some people say that Opikankonu, the younger brother of Powhatan, could have been part of the group of young people that were captured by the Spanish, taken to what they call New Spain, Christianized, and then brought back here. However, due to their wanting to visit their relatives, these indigenous young men uh, came back with war parties and the Spanish left Virginia, which is why we're speaking English today. A lot of people have the misconception that members of the Powhatan Paramountsi were a peaceful, calm, lovable agricultural people. I come from a warrior society and we were the first to defend our homeland. Homeland security for us basically started in the Caribbean in 1492. Also, even today, you will find that Native Americans join our military organizations at a higher rate than any other ethnic group in this country because we love our homeland and we still defend our homeland. Although some people want to make us strangers in our homeland, as opposed to others who have come here in a strange land, we are still here. There are all sorts of evidence throughout Fairfax County 
and what we call the DMV area, the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia, that are a testimony to our presence. Some of the petroglyphs at Great Falls are old as 5,000 BC. <laughs> we consider the fabric of Fairfax County and this country a coexistence of all different cultures starting from 1607 and 1500s with the Europeans and from 1619 we had a convergence of Africans that were documented as coming here to this country. We also had a very large percentage of indentured Europeans who came to Fairfax County. We all too often hear about those people who were enslaved under a heinous system of chattel bondage, but we seldom, if ever, hear about those people who came here as indentured people from Europe. And I'm mentioning that because there's a lot of uh, emphasis placed on enslaved people. And we forget that probably most of the Europeans that came here were indentured. They weren't all the lords and ladies that arrived from England looking for better hunting or uh, what they call the, the virgin land. Uh, my people call the widowed land. Uh, they wanted new experiences when they came to the Americas. When I think about the different people who were indigenous to Virginia who were here, I, quite frequently I hear the term dog, which is spelled D-O-G-U-E or D-O-E-G. I like to think about Toxnet because Toxnet was our main village. And I would like to emphasize the best, the apex of our villagers, uh, rather than the uh, assortment that were seen by John Smith in his travels. He didn't go far inland, so we don't have people telling us today about the many other Indian villages that were inland away from the water's edge areas. And it's important to remember that what we have today as highways were preceded by our waterways, which were our ancient highway systems. A very prominent name in, in uh, Fairfax County is the name Boston. And the Bostons, the name Boston originally came from Wampanoag Indians from Nantucket Island who intermarried with Indian women here in Fairfax County from the Toxnet and the Dog. One of my cousins years ago received a plaque uh, for being a member of the Boston family, recognizing the Boston family as the oldest family in Fairfax County, and I found that interesting. When I think about all of the recent contributions that the Native people have had in Fairfax County and on the East Coast and in this country, I'm very proud that we have achieved excellence in a wide variety of areas. Historically, I come from a family of healers. My uh, great-grandmother, Henrietta, was known to be a well-known healer and midwife. She never lost a mother or a child. And she passed on her knowledge of using indigenous remedies and plants and herbs onto her select descendants uh, who are still alive today. Uh, we have people uh, that used to work in the quarries in Washington, D.C. today, where the National Zoo is, that used to be part of a quarry where my ancestors up to my great-grandfather crossed from Fairfax County 
to work in the quarries, even in Washington, D.C., at Lanier Heights, where they have something called Quarry Road, to let people know about that. There are so many different places in this area that have old indigenous roots and histories to them and modern contemporary ones. For example, my mother's family is Pamunkey. The Pamunkey, uh, which was a, uh, the leading tribe in the Powhatan Paramountcy uh, of the um, 1700s, and 1600s uh, was headed by a man named Powhatan, the father of Pocahontas, and he had over 100 wives. One of his wives was a Toxnet Indian woman, and he named his son Tox Powhatan in honor of his mother's tribal affiliation. So the Pamunkey from King William County, Virginia, the leading tribe of the Powhatan Paramountcy of 32 Indian nations, intermarried with the Dogs and Toxinets from very early. And even today, I'm enrolled at Pamunkey, which is the first Virginia tribe to be federally recognized. And over the years, we have gone up and down the road to the reservation in King William County, Virginia for different ceremonies and celebrations. Every year, the governor's house in Richmond, since 1645, they have had the annual, what's now called the Thanksgiving Treaty Ceremony. And we have participated in that. The Treaty of 1677, which was signed after Bacon's Rebellion at Middle Plantation that you now call Williamsburg, was signed by a head chief that was a woman, Kako Koesk, and all the other leaders of the Indian nations signed under her name. I once called her the Queen of Washington, D.C., not just the Queen of Pamunkey, because our treaty extended to those areas that are now part of the nation's capital. And part of the provisions that were clearly stated in the Treaty of 1677 allowed us into perpetuity to have fishing and hunting rights in Virginia. And it also stated that no member of the indigenous tribal people that, whose leaders signed that treaty would ever be enslaved. So we have an unbroken history and tradition of being free in our homeland. I had to say that because unfortunately the Pequots were taken out of their homeland and enslaved and sold in the Caribbean. And I was so proud to find that the contemporary Pequots went throughout the Caribbean to find the descendants of their extended cousins that had been sold into slavery. And they have reconciliation events today and they send their children to college, and they pay for health care and other uh, things to help them better their lives. So this indigenous concept of homeland, your village looking out for you, is still a continuing tradition that we have today. I noticed that uh, one of the speakers later will be speaking about the Potawomac uh, fishing traditions, and I'm reminded that there's a very important Pocahontas reframed film festival. This year it's going to be at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond, Virginia. 
And one of the short films being shown there is by Kevin Krigsbold. He's Pamunkey. And his film is, has all to do with the Pamunkey River and how it's the lifeblood of our people after all these years. So I'm very glad that you're joining us today to find out more about all these different cultures that have made the fabric and the cultural foundation of Fairfax County even stronger. And the cultural diversity that we have in the United States of America started right here in Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, Rose, for your eloquent words, your insightful history, new information, and fascinating stories.